Well, I think that if it comes to that, uh, I think it is the position the U.S. will take. Uh, I think it will um, have a lot of negative ramifications for the immediate issue of getting Israelis and Palestinians closer to peace, uh, and also with broader per perceptions of the U.S. in the context of the Arab Spring. Uh, whatever our formal arguments will be perceived as you know, going against the will of the Palestinian people at the time that other peoples of the Arab world are expressing their own will. Uh, my own view has been that uh, we should have tried more effectively through our diplomacy to not get in this situation. Uh, I think that a resolution to the General Assembly is something we could and should have supported. It would have been an affirmation of the aspirations of the Palestinian people. Uh, and if we had been supportive of it, including going back a number of months when some people were starting to propose this, uh, then it would have been perceived as something that wasn't anti-U.S. and not even necessarily anti-Israel, it would have been pro-Palestinian. We also could have had some leverage to try to shape certain parts of it that might have been problematic if we really were you know, supportive of it as, as a general position. I think in the, in the Middle East, one of our strengths is our security role. Uh, countries still, many of our allies still benefit from the security role we play, uh, whether it's keeping you know, freedom of the seas in the Persian Gulf uh, or providing support to different regimes against some of the threats that they face. And I think we still have a credibility for, even with some of the recent problems, uh, we have been a force for peace uh, you know, in, in a number of occasions over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I think President Obama, I know that opinion polls in the Arab world are down now, but I think he still has a personal credibility that is faded, but I think it's latent, and if policies changed and progress was made, I think you'd see that bump up again. And so the Wizard of Oz analogy, you know, was to that movie where there's the great and powerful wizard who everybody's afraid of, and then little Dorothy and her little dog pull back the curtain and see that he's a little guy. Uh, and I think that's what happened in the Arab world. When the first dictator fell, there was a sense of empowerment that, you know, whoa, the curtain's been pulled, these guys aren't as powerful as we thought, you know, we can bring them down too. Uh, I don't think it's run its course uh, at all. I'm not predicting, you know, short term, but I think every government in the Arab world is going to be faced with more challenges about how it brings about political change than was true uh, before the Tunisian vegetable vendor, you know, uh, burnt himself to death. And I think it's there. It's not that Saudi Arabia is going to have a Tahrir Square next month, but I think w even with the concession by the king to allow, you know, some greater rights for women, you know, the forces of change are at work in that region. Uh, and I don't think they can be fully, you know, uh, made to go away. Okay. Yeah, I think the commonality in all these countries is uncertainty. Nothing definitive is going to happen out of any of these elections. Uh, it's going to be a step towards, you know, creating and institutionalizing a new political system. That's always a long road. And it won't just be a straight line, it'll have, you know, curves and back and forth. Uh, Libya, it's still a question of, of whether or not there can be a degree of stability that comes out of this. There's all sorts of militias running around, uh, the Transitional Council is reorganizing itself. And so Tunisia and e Egypt, I think, have processes that are going to be contested politically. Uh, Libya has a situation of whether or not there can be, whether there may be a degree of instability and even some anarchy. Mm -hmm. US, um, uh, the U.S.-Pakistani relationship uh, is under great strain. Uh, with the uh, killing of bin Laden, there, in my view, were only two possible conclusions you could have come to about the Pakistanis. One is that they didn't know, and that's pretty incompetent given the circumstances. Uh, the other is that they did know and they didn't tell us, and that's not very trustworthy. Either way, it didn't particularly send a real great message and feeling about the relationship. Admiral Mullen used the opportunity of leaving office to be very frank, uh, and uh, the Obama administration has tried to sort of temper that and damp it down, 
as you sort of have to do diplomatically. Uh, but that's a relationship in which we really have to have to determine, you know, uh, how valuable it is to us and and what emphasis we're going to put on it. We're not going to end it, but I think it's made it apparent that uh, Pakistanis are serving their own interests in ways that uh, are really uh, not consistent with with our interests, and that's a big problem.